Many different kinds of interactions occur between organisms themselves. Organisms might be competing for resources, just like two animals that are fighting for something to eat, or maybe you and a friend fighting for something to eat. That's called resource competition. Symbioses are when organisms kind of work together. The kind of examples of cleaner shrimp cleaning different organisms, or cleaner fishes cleaning the parasites off of hammerhead sharks, and those many other examples that we know from the sea are a type of symbiosis. Organisms may defend against each other. Even algae have chemicals that actually break down the teeth of sea urchins that try to eat them. So chemical defenses, uh, bioluminescence is one of the defenses that we've talked about this, sem this semester, countershading, all those different kinds of things are examples of interactions among organisms. But really the one that gains the most attention is predation. And all of us kind of have a sort of strange uh, attraction to predation. Literally, who eats whom? And I guess as top predators on the food chain uh, or food web, and we'll talk about the difference between those in a few minutes, it's easy to have a fascination with predators. We're fascinated with lions and tigers and bears. We're fascinated with sharks and how they eat other fish. And I suppose we might not quite feel so fascinated were we the ones being eaten. But fortunately, I guess for us, not for the organisms we eat, but fortunately, man is the top predator and arguably the most powerful top predator ever to exist on Earth. Models of the feeding relationship, so who eats whom, may take many different forms, but the most common one are the ones that we know about the food chain. And a food chain is really the linear transfer of energy and matter from one organism to the next. A good example of a food chain is a larger fish eating a smaller fish, which eats a smaller fish than that. So big fish eats middle-sized fish, eats little-sized fish. That's an example of a food chain. However, most of the ocean really operates on a food web. It's a number of different interactions that might occur among organisms. Organisms might eat other, other organisms at different times in their lives. Um, organisms may eat more than one type of organism. Uh, fish may eat squid. Fish may eat plankton. Squid may eat plankton. So food webs really more realistically um, illustrate, more, realistic, more realistically model, the, the way that energy and matter get transferred from lower trophic levels to higher trophic levels. And we'll see some examples of that in just a few minutes. However, food chains, we're not going to forget about those because in many ways food chains are a simpler way for understanding the ecology of the world ocean. So we'll put, spend some time talking about that as well. Here's an example of the differences between food chains, again the linear transfer of energy and matter between different organisms, or food webs, the sort of multi-path way of transferring energy and matter on food webs. One thing we should note is the way that we talk about different levels of a food chain or even a food web. We've spent considerable time talking about the primary producers, the phytoplankton that absorb carbon dioxide from the environment, take sunlight, mix those two together to create chemical energy. That chemical energy is then fed upon by herbivores, organisms that um, eat the phytoplankton, and then so on and so forth as carnivores eat the herbivores that eat the phytoplankton. Because phytoplankton are the organisms, uh, at, like plants, who are producing food in the first place, they're called primary producers. The things that eat the primary producers are sometimes called primary consumers. And we go on with those kinds of designations and they help us understand better the ecological role of different organisms at different places in food webs. But understand that any particular organism may be, may actually, especially in a food web, any particular organism may be a primary consumer or a secondary consumer. They may live at different levels at any time in their life history so that larval organisms, particularly larval fishes, may eat lower on the food web and then when they become larger fishes they may eat actually higher on the food web. So again, remember these definitions are convenient 
but biology doesn't always conform to our ways of categorizing it. If we look at a food chain, a typical food, marine food chain, we see again phytoplankton as their primary producers at the bottom of the food chain. They're fed upon by herbivorous zooplankton, which is the primary consumer level or the first level consumers. They may be eaten by planktivores, planktivorous fishes, eating the copepods and krill and maybe some smaller organisms as well. The planktivorous fishes, even though they are technically carnivores, they may be eaten by the true carnivores, the true flesh-eating types of fishes. And then we have top predators, which are the organisms at the very top of the food chain or the food web that feed upon the, these organisms, the carnivores, and so on and so forth. So in a typical food chain and in a typical food web, we may have three to five to six, um, rarely more levels, but possibly more levels than that, what, we're, what are called trophic levels. So trophic levels are feeding levels, and the bottom of the food web, the lowest level, is going to be the phytoplankton that produce the food.